Hello, today I thought I'd just um, show you how I create the background for my little mini books. I've done several. Um, one I did as a sample for Seth Apter when he released some of his stamps. Um, I've had one that I've just posted on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I'm just completing another little one. I've got the background done. And they've got quite a painterly sort of nondescript background but it's got a nice lot of visual texture. This one was actually, there's two, there's another one that matches this as well. And they, they are half of an A4 sheet of watercolour paper. Um, it's from Sea White of Brighton and I find it holds up very well to wet mediums. It doesn't buckle. Um, I love the... Uh, is it Bockingford? Anyway, the other one. And it's wonderful but it's an arm and a leg. I keep that for very, very special projects. Uh, but this is 350 GSM, 150 pound, and there's 15 sheets. And I think this was about four or five pounds. Um, so not too bad price-wise. And as I say, this and the other one that matches it, uh, they're half of one of those A4 sheets. Um, all I did was I scored it every six centimetres. So one, two, three, four scores, folded it. I then scored an, a fraction further on and this will be the front either that way or that way um, and it doesn't quite meet and I like the little gap there because um, I'll, I'll put so, some sort of a fastener here but then it makes a little accordion book so I'll just walk you through how I create the background for that rather than doing another little mini book which I don't need I'm going to do it on a quarter of the A4 sheet so I'll make four postcards um, so we've got the 350 GSM watercolour paper. I've got the Green Man Infusions by Paper Artsy. A water bottle, water spritzer bottle. Some gesso. Now this is PBO gesso, which I, I like, I use it a lot. Um, I did have a very large pot, uh, but it was getting down towards less than half full and it was the top was starting to dry out a little bit because there was a lot of air in the pot. And also it was getting very difficult to get my spatula and my paintbrushes and everything in the bottom without getting it all over and making a mess. So all I did was I actually put it into this, it's a ketchup bottle, <laughs> um, and I just put a little toothpick in the top uh, and I can just squirt it out as I want and I can get a very small amount if I want. There isn't as much air in there as well so it doesn't go off. So how I start, oh I also have two brayers, this is um, I think a speedball, no I don't think this is a speedball one, I actually, anyway, this brayer which you can see is very, very coated in paint and mediums and all sorts. I will have to clean it shortly because the middle bit just isn't making contact. And this, I think I've mentioned this in several videos before, is a seam roller. It was about £3 and it's narrower. Um, it did break up at the edges so I get a bit of a wavy line but I don't mind that. Uh, and I can soon get rid of the lines but it just makes it so that I can get a smaller area of whatever onto my projects so we'll set those aside how I start is I'll possibly just do one card and then it'll be quicker my gesso, I put, I've got my glass mat so everything will wipe off there and my gesso, hopefully this is in shot so we'll look just about side again. I'll start with my bigger brayer. I've just got the gesso out on the the mat 
I'm going to brayer it out a bit. You can see what I mean about the middle of the brayer not making contact. <clears throat> so I brayed it out onto my glass mat and then I'm just quickly going to go over my card. And what you want, you won't be able to see this, but what you want is a very random application. You want gaps, you want white space. I use my two rule, um, brayers because this one does pick up gesso along the full surface. So if I want a bit more, I can go in with this one. Right, so I'll quickly dry that and then we'll go to the next step. I'm not going to wipe my gesso up because I'm going to use that again. Yeah, that's dry. I'm sure you still won't be able to see the gesso on there. Let's see if I can get it. I don't know. So the next thing I do is, again on my glass mat, I've got the infusions, the green man. You can do this with any of the infusions. I just happen to like the green at the moment. So I think I'm going to do some botanical projects. And I'm just going to sprinkle a small amount of the infusions on my card. That's probably too much, so I'll be able to pick it up with some some paper, the excess. And then I'm just going to spritz it. And that will activate the infusions. I like the Green Man because it's got these lovely turquoise colours, but it's actually also got some of the yellows and the walnut ink, and it, it has a nice lot of different colours. Don't mind if it runs away. I'm now going to place, this hasn't got gesso, it's just a piece of the watercolour card. And I'm going to place it on the top and just push. And you'll see the difference between the two. I'm just going to get rid of a bit of that water around the outside. So I'm going to try and not get it on the back of the card. Probably not successful, but... There we are. So that's just on the card that hasn't got gesso on it. And this, as you can see, has got gaps, some white space, because that's where the gesso has acted as a resist. I knew I'd get it on the back. I always do. <laughs> Most of my postcards I have to back with plain white paper or card just to make sure that they're white. And I'm just picking up the excess ink with my watercolour card. I don't mind if there is some little bits at the edges with white space. I'll just pop that over there. I don't like to waste anything so we'll just pick the excess up with our other card. I don't think we can get much more off there. I'll we'll swipe it through and see a little bit. So I'll just wipe that up. Right, so you can see the difference. This has got some nice visual texture. This is lovely, but it's just fairly sort of not bland, but it is just hasn't got a great deal of visual texture compared to this other one. If I think I need a little bit more of the infusions at the edges, I just use a paintbrush and just come in from the edges and also smudge it out a little bit. Do the same on here, but I think it's possibly dried. Right, so we've got a reasonable amount on there, but I think I want more. So I'll go back again with my infusions. This is the thing, you can build it up. You don't have to always start with a lot. 
and we'll spritz again. And you can go as dark as you want with this method. You can settle on pale or you can go really dark. We'll go back again with the second postcard. This time I'll let it run off a little bit and I'll go back in. I want more on the edges. That's it, we're getting more of an even coverage. But as I say, you can personalise it, you can do as much or as little as you wish. I tend to always wear gloves when I do this because the infusions are permanent once they're dry. So it's um, it's rather messy on the fingers. Just going to smudge that out a little bit. I want a little bit on the edges. This is the one that's no gesso. And you can see that that is nice. Let's pick some of this up. And then I can add it in here. It's nice, but I really like this one. That's got more about it. So I'll just put them side by side so you can see before I mop up. And I'll just dry that. As you can see we've got areas that have got the resist. If I wanted to move a little bit of that, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. I can just get the infusions off the, the gesso because as I say it does act as a resist. So sometimes you can just lighten the areas a little bit by brushing over them. And it'll brush the infusions off and it'll create a, a whiter area. I'll just mop this up. When I've mopped up the infusions with a baby wipe, I keep my baby wipe because it has lovely colours on it. And as I say, if the infusions are, are fully diluted, once they're dry, they are permanent, so I could use it in art and it, it wouldn't react with water. So we've got our two backgrounds again, and I want a little bit more interest, so I'm going to go back in again with the gesso. I'll set that one aside for the moment. Get some more gesso. You can see how easy it is to use the um, the sauce bottle. Just roll it out a fair bit because then it spreads the gesso. It is you can't control this. You get what you get. Um, sometimes you'll get big areas of gesso like this. Sometimes you don't. It is what it is. It's random, but mostly I like it. And if I don't, I keep going until I do. It's all about the layers. There we are. So that one I think I'm going to stop because I like this. It's got a nice lot down this edge to almost build a frame. 
and it's got a nice little interesting area there. So that one, I'd say, is completed as a background, apart from adding one, it's, it's completely dry, I will add some of my rusty tissue, which adds another layer to it. I like the rusty tissue with this one because it's actually got the walnut, well, the wal all the infusions have got walnut ink, but you can see some of the walnut ink crystals. But you can actually see a bit of yellow, which ties in with the rust colour very nicely. Um, so it looks nice when it's laid over the top. But I'll set that aside to dry. And we'll add some gesso to this one. And then you can see what the, the extra layer. I think I've got too much gesso, but anyway. You can see how it works when you've got big blocks of gesso. Seth Apter calls this skipping. Where you're not completely touching the project with your brayer. This is going to be a lot more muted, a lot paler, but sometimes that's what you want. So we've got a lot more white going on here because I've, I've got a lot more gesso. That looked like a fingerprint, so I'll have that out. There we are. And that, to me now, looks equally as good. You can add stamps to this, the rusty tissue, anything you want, but it's a decent background to start with. Uh, even though it's only got the two layers, it looks good. I personally would add a lot more layers, um, but it's up to you. So I'll show you the two side by side. There we are. This is the one with three layers, that's the one with two. This is a lot more gesso that not so much but I like them both so I'll let these dry and then we'll go to the next step right we've got our background I've just realized that really it doesn't show up very well against my glass mat being so pale so if we put this down it might show up a little bit better maybe something darker might show better as well let's have a look That's it, that, that shows up better. So I'll just work on this piece of uh, craft card at the moment. So I've got um, DecoArt Americana Decoupage Glue. This is the one for paper. I did have one for uh, napkins, which works very well as well, but I've run out. So this works just equally as well. I've got one of my big paint brushes and I've got some of my rusty tissue. This, there is a video on my channel on how I create this and I love the organic look of it. Um, it's just one of my sheets of rusty tissue. I scrunched it up, opened it out and then randomly tore it and you get all different shapes and little bits of interest. So I've already torn some, so I've chosen this piece because I think that's lovely. Um, so I'm just move my craft card up for a second. Don't particularly want it covered in glue. So I'm going to add a reasonable amount of the decoupage glue where I'm going to put my napkin. Well, it's actually a kitchen roll. So, there we are. And I'm going to lay this on. I don't know whether it's because I'm right-handed um, 
or what it is, but I always tend to have my focal points, my points of interest, at the two thirds across, a third up. I think it's possibly because I'm right handed. Right, so I'm just, I'm going with the direction of the tissue to keep it from ruckling. Sometimes I add texture by adding sort of ruckles and creases in, but this one I don't particularly want. I've got another little bit here, which is quite interesting. And don't forget there's always some medium on your lid which you can gather up and use. So we'll go, we'll go that way up. Just going in here. Again. And if you want, you can sort of tear into it, um, use a toothpick or something to create gaps. It does show the underneath colours and textures because it's so thin, but you can always tear a little bit away so you get a gap. It's entirely up to you. So I've got that adhered on. I do tend to also then go over the rest of the postcard. Basically so that it's all got the same finish on it. I don't want, as much as this is matte, I don't want one bit to look different to the other. And it, you can end up with that if you adhere this with one type of adhesive and don't have adhesive elsewhere. So I always tend to just go over the the top to make sure it's all got the same finish. It makes it more cohesive and uniform. So that's that. It dries very quickly does the um, the decoupage glue. So I'll just give it a quick blast and then you can see what it's like when it's dry. Yeah, that's more or less dry now. I will leave it to completely dry so it isn't even tacky before I work on it. But that's a really nice background and as you can see the tissue has sort of blended into the background because there's a little bits of the walnut ink and the yellows from the infusions. I will just trim it off. And as you can see, my usual messy self, I have got it on the back as well. Don't throw these little bits away of rusty tissue. I know it seems extreme, but that on another project will come in at an edge and look fab. So I keep all little scraps. So some stamping. I think we'll go with... Let's see, what shall we have? Hmm, I'm just flicking through my stamps, paper artsy stamps. Let's have a look. Oh, yes, I think we'll have this one. I like this one. This is a set up to one, and it's just lines. I have a thing about lines lines and numbers get me every time. This is Eclectica. EM68 designed by Seth Apter and I think I'm going to go with a fairly palish shade we'll either go with Vintage Photo Archival or Hickory Smoke I think I'll go with Hickory Smoke I can always add some Vintage Photo later so this is the Archival Link Distress Archival Link Make sure I'm still in shot. Now, notoriously, I get these lines wonky, but it doesn't matter. And I'm going to go over 
my rusty tissue a little bit. Yes, I'm wonky as per usual. And it adds a little bit of texture without overdoing it. Yep, I like that, but I do think we need something a bit darker. So we'll go to the vintage photo. Now, do we need a different stamp? I think we possibly do. Uh, what else have we got in Seth? No. I think we'll go to an indigo blue one. This is um, an indigo blue stamp. I don't know what set it's from. I've had it absolutely years. And I absolutely love it. It's just text. There's, I've got Art, Vintage, and there was another one I had. Let's see. Inspire. We'll use Inspire. They got so well used, they actually <laughs> you didn't see the words anymore. But I use it just as a texture stamp. So I'm just going to go in at the edges. I like to have things framed a little bit. So that's the bottom right. We'll go up the top left. And I don't tend to use this the right way up. I use it upside down, crossways on anything. It, it, I don't use it as it's meant to be used. And I'll add a couple of little bits just in there. I'm just wondering whether I want something a little bit darker. I think I do. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can find Seth's stamp that I absolutely love. One of my favourites. It'll be the last one I've come to. I love that set. Absolutely love that set. It's the favourite. So I like this one. There's a the line one as well that I like, but I love this one. And if you're not sure, just pop your stamp like this on the top and think, yeah, that's good, that's going to work. So I'm gonna go with ground espresso now because I want a little bit of depth. And I think I'm actually going to go this way with the stamp set. And I don't tend to always put them on a mounting board. don't think I've got much ink on there. It hasn't shown up a lot. That's it, that's better. That's better, yes. And we'll have a little bit up the top here. There we are. So that's that's building more visual texture. I think I need to just add a frame. So it'll be amazing how much difference this makes. I've just got a sponge and my ground espresso ink and I'm just going to frame it by just going round and some areas I'll go in a lot more some just lightly I tend to do the corners more just a little bit and then heavier on the corners almost like a vignette effect so that's that. Did I show you which stamp set that was? That's um, ESA 28 um, Eclectica for Paper Artsy. Seth Apter for Paper Artsy. It's a Paper Artsy stamp. And I love this one. It's got this, which is one of my favourites. It's got the compass, which I love. This is absolutely fab. I love the mixed media artwork. And this is another nice one. 
um, so it does it does get used a lot but as you can see it's not a full stamped image it's quite random but I've built up the layers with that I need a focal point I haven't quite decided what that'll be yet I just noticed a little bit of uh, cheesecloth or muslin just there on my desk I might add that in for some lightness and some wispiness um, I aren't sure I have this lovely rusted flower but I don't want it to be a 3D project I want it to be just flat basically so I may just add something like a, a flower no I might add words we'll see um, but I'll I'll show you the finished project uh, when it's got its focal point so as you can see we've finished um, this is a little wire botanical that I created it was just made using floristry wire this is real wire but you could use the stem wire and I just bent it to make I'll do another video on creating them I bent it to make a botanical basically and twisted it and everything then I laid it on to some kitchen roll and dusted a little bit of rusting powder over the top with a fan brush and added the vinegar uh, and that activated the rust so it's nice and rusty it is a postcard but I wouldn't send it through the mail because it's got the dimension on it now and it would ruin it um, you could try laminating it but I think you'd lose the effect but it'll be quite a nice thing to put in a swap with somebody else um, another artist I've just had the little bit of muslin at the bottom underneath and I've just attached it with a stapler I've just pushed my stapler in and just stapled it and I quite like the contrast of the shiny silver of the staple and the line and the botanical which is wavy and rusty so I put one staple there and two there so I hope you can see that I hope it focuses okay and I hope you give the technique a go